Hello everyone, this is Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Craps and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're actually going to do a video that's called How I Play the Don't Hybrid. Before you tune out, because I know I've done this in previous videos, this came to me from an idea from a subscriber that I communicated through email. I answer all emails, midatlanticcraps at gmail.com, and I answer all comments. He got talking to me because he was very surprised in a recent uh, series I did in episode two that I showed a losing session. He was surprised at that. Let's talk about that. Okay, so we're back at my YouTube channel. This is Jeff, and I appreciate you sticking in there. Um, the subscriber that I was communicating with, and it was over several emails, actually was very curious to know why I showed a losing session when most YouTube players don't. And you know what? I'm not saying he's right or wrong, but I think over the thousands of YouTube videos that I've watched of craps players or any gaming episode, they always show their wins. Very seldom do they show their losses unless they are live. So I got thinking about that, and we got communicated about how I played the, the Don't Hybrid, which is different from other people. But he, he grasps the concept after I communicated it with him through email. So that brought me to the point of, hey, why don't I shoot a video and talk about that? So upfront disclaimer, all my videos are shot live, unedited. I am ad-libbing at the moment. However, I'm going to embed a video in which I actually show playing the don't on three points, the six and the eight, the five and the nine, and the four and the 10, they're the same. It's three videos or three points through that uh, embedded video. And when we come back from that, I'm actually going to do the rollout. So with that in mind, that video is coming up next. Hello, this is Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Craps, and today I'm going to show you how I play the Don't Hybrid. And playing the Don't Hybrid is a combination of using a Don't Bet with a semi-hedge on the hybrid side of the light side in order to be able to potentially, not necessarily, but potentially increase your winnings on the rollout on this hybrid system. It's very simple. You could put the don't pass out there and just let it roll with or without odds. And it's true, you could make as much money uh, or uh, win more money than this system. But the hybrid system gives you an opportunity to increase your profits and at the same time reduce your exposure on your money management of how much money you lose compared to if you just played the light side. So how the system will come out and play is we will start with a $25 don't pass. I have a $500 bankroll, plenty enough money to play this strategy. You can do it with a $300 or $200 bankroll. You would just need to know where you stand after each shooter uh, as far as how much your profitability is up to that point. You can play this at a $100 bankroll. However, you would be at a $5 table and you would reduce the don't down to $15 and accordingly adjust the bets that you're going to get ready to see. So, before we get started with the rollout, I'm going to compare the 6 and the 8, the 5 and the 9, and the 4 and the 10. We're just going to use one side or the other in this comparison. There is eight ways to lose on the come out. You have the six ways on the 7 and the two ways on the 11. I agree with that. That's a 22% or a 1 in 4 chance of losing on the come out, which means you have a 75% chance to establish a number or a roll that's beyond the 7 or 11. I consider the 11 and the 3 a wash. So although we have eight ways to lose with the 7 and the 11, you have three ways to win with the 2 and the 3. And of course, the 12, bar the 12, it pushes. So there's no hedging at this particular level here. So with this, this combination, I don't worry about the come out 7 especially with a $500 bankroll. You'll see what I mean as we move along here. So you come out with a don't, $25 don't. The point rolls out. It establishes, or the dice roll out, it establishes a point of six. Here's the hedge on the hybrid. 
we could let this sit here and just roll until we either hit the point of six or hit the seven and we'd win $25. You can add odds. At this particular level, we're not going to add any odds on the six and the eight. We're going to add one time odds on the five and the nine, and we're going to add two times odds on the four and the 10. In other videos, I will expand upon that on the rollouts. So we have 25 on the don't, the point of six, which is the very first roll. And during this example, on each one of these rolls, the six and the eight, five and the nine, the four and the 10, it's gonna be three rolls uh, or three points established. We will go with an average of six, six rolls to assume that on that six roll would be the average of the PSO or the 0.7 outcoming. And you'll see what I mean. So we have 25 on the don't. We're going to place that amount or equal to that amount in place bets. 10, 20, cap two, 22 against 25. Well, that's great. Uh, this doesn't give us very many chances to win. Right now we have the five, seven, and eight as winners. Five, seven, and eight. Next roll is a six. We're gonna lose 25. Okay, next roll is a seven. We're gonna make $3. But our place bets are still out there. So we are risking almost equal the amount on both sides for a certain number of rolls before you progress, regress, or turn off your bets. And that's the good thing about that. On a really long roll, if you even wanted to, you could take this bet down, but that's the, not the right thing to do because you're a favor to win here once you get out past the, uh, the come out and the point is established. So what I like to do is I like to take a equal amount somewhere between my pass line bet and the amount of the minimum bets that I have placed out there. In this case, it's 10. So in this case, we're gonna place a $15 come bet. 0.7 out comes next, we're gonna win $40, we're gonna lose 22. You say, well, that's great, but look at the numbers we're covering. It's just as simple, and I know a lot of people will disagree with me, to either place the nine now and get five more ways, or four more ways to win uh, there on the nine, but I like to bring that down to the field bet and only run the field bets until I get three come progressions established, or, I get the point of nine established. If the next roll is a nine, that would travel. I would not run another field bet because I would get paid here and I've established my nine point. I'm happy having that many chances against the don't here. I think that makes sense. So let's assume that the next roll was a four. That would travel to the four. We would get paid on the four in the field. We're going to transition this out to the come we're gonna leave the $10 there, take five more dollars, throw to the dealer or place our come bet manually because that's a manual bet on the 15. So let's say the next roll is an eight. So the roll, this would travel to the eight. We would lose on the field. We would get paid $14 for our eight place bet. We're gonna throw the, uh, the dealer a dollar. He's gonna give us $15. Dollar comes off the table. This $15 becomes the third and final come bet. We take our place bet one more time in the field because we don't have the nine established. Place it in the field and let's say the next roll is a nine. Okay, so that's the fourth roll. That will travel to the nine. We're done anyway, it doesn't matter here. We're gonna get paid $10 on the nine on the field bet. We're one, two, three. We're done with the field anyway. We just collect our money, and now we're going to let the progression roll out. So that's the fourth, that's the fourth roll. So let's say the next roll is a five. On the five, we have $10 place bet. It's going to pay us, um, it's going to pay us $14. Again, 15 for one, throw a dollar out, 15 for one, take the one dollar. We're gonna rack this. We're gonna leave our place bet at $10 and we're coming up with the next roll. The next roll would be a seven. So the seven out, and in this case, if you see, we did not capitalize on any of our come bets. Now you may think to yourself, well, you also have the two, the three, the 11, the 12, and we never came out with anything on the 10. That is true. But in this case, what happens is this $45 on the come bets comes down, we also lose the 10, so that's 55, but we're going to make 25 here on that bet there, which means we're going to lose 
$30. We lost $30 on that whole place bet. If we take this money and we rack it up with the scenario I just showed you, we are actually $12 ahead. We started with 500, we've got our four, we've got our four in green, we have uh, 95, is that 100? Let's count this out, just to make sure I'm right. Okay, there's 100, so we are two, four, six, eight, we are $8 ahead. Typically it's somewhere between seven and $14, depending on the number, if you play it that way on the average of six. So, once again, we move on, quarter odds, we get past the, the, the 7 and the 11. On the come out, the point established is to be 5. The same philosophy, we're going to take single odds, which is going to be $30. $30 is going to pay you $20 on the, on the 7. That gives us 20 plus 25 is $45 we can play. How do we play that? It's a, it's a slew of different ways. Do we come out here with 24 this way? That's 24. We add another... Uh, we, we put up a progression in the come, that's 34. We're still not balanced right. So you have a couple things to do here. You can either add more money to the place bets, skip the field, or add more money with the field and wait for the nine. In this case, what I like to do is I like to rotate between putting odds and no odds. No odds, I would place the field bet. With odds, I am going to place the nine. Now, if you look up here, there's only 34 against 45. So if we really want to think about it, and we really want to capitalize on this, if we added that much more to it, we're now going to have 51 against 45. I like that ratio. I'm willing to lose $6 because I came to gamble. So we go ahead and we bump these up, and this is where you'll pay attention to the regression. We bump these up to Minimum $15 bets, we have nothing in the field. So our winners right now are six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, we don't want the seven to specifically to come on the next roll, but if it did, what are we gonna have? We're gonna have our $15 come bet. So, we're gonna win 40 down here, plus the 15 is 65. We've more than got that covered. It always doesn't work that way, but let's just hypothetically say that a six comes. This 15 travels to the six, that comes down is going to get paid $21 from the dealer. Go to $21 from the dealer. We're going to pick up the three. We're going to rack this. And we're going to place this in our come bet. All right, next roll is a 10, okay? We don't get paid on the 10, but it comes over here. And now if you take a look, we now have $63 exposed against 40 but we do still do have one more come progression, so now we're almost even for what will be the third roll. So we had points one, six is two, 10 is gonna be our third roll. So with our third roll, this will be our last come progression. Let's hypothetically say the, the next roll was a nine. So the nine will travel, it'll come down here and get paid 21 by the dealer, 21 by the dealer, we're done with our come progressions. We don't have to run any more come progressions. We take all of this and we rack it. Sorry, I hate a dirty rack. So, all right. Now, that would be our fourth roll. Now remember, we're gonna do this on the average of six. So I'm gonna assume that we don't hit a point and it's, it, the number that comes out next is either a two, three, four, 11, or 12. So let's, it doesn't matter what it was. We, we didn't win anything. On the next rollout, it's a seven because that would be our six roll. And we said on this example, we're going to say that the seven comes every six times. Okay, so we do lose, the seven comes, we do lose our $63. What we're going to get paid, 25 on the flat, 20 on the odds, on the, on the lay odds there, and there you see we're going to be losing $18. Now you might think to yourself, you're losing $18, but really you're not. Here's the reason why. Let's rack everything again. There's 100 in red, 100 in red. The green is going to get paid back to green, so we have 400 there, there's 500. So right now, we are up, there's 25, 30, we're up $32 and two shooters. At this level, playing at a $10 table, if you did $32 in, in 
between two shooters, 10 shooters, you can see that you would be up your 10 or 20, your 20% win, or should be close to your 20% win um, of your goal. I always set win loss and uh, win goals and uh, set a, a loss for where I'm going to stop playing for the day or change my style of play. Because this, this philosophy on, on what I'm showing you here with the hybrid system is based on the fact that it is every six roll, the seven is coming out. So just keep that in mind that every six roll, that seven is coming out. So now we come back out with a quarter on the don't, the point the, the, we roll. Now we haven't lost on any of the come out, so don't, pay, don't think that that doesn't happen. But the point becomes a four. Now in this case, the four gives us the ability to put better odds because there's only three ways to lose on the four. And we're not talking about any hedges, but occasionally I will throw some money on the hard four, even if it, at this level, if it's a nickel, that's gonna pay me $35 and reduce one of the chances of the fours hitting me. Um, you could always throw just a dollar on the easy fours, but that gets complicated. That's a whole nother video. I'm just showing you that from a standpoint of hedging, the only hedge that I would take at this level would be by the hard four or the 10, depending on whether you get that number, by $5. Okay, so in this case, we're going to take up to three to up to six times odds we can, but we're really gonna just take, as I said in the example, just two times odds, because I wanna show you that you can win at this. Two times odds would be 50 to win 25. So we have 25 and 25, that would be 50. If we came out here with our chips and we went 44 inside, this is the part that sometimes is confusing to some people. So there's 44 inside against 50. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But you're gonna have a come progression for the first couple, couple uh, rolls. With that come progression, you're now going to win 65. 50 down here, 15 up there on the 0.7 out on the next roll. So in this case, what I like to do is I like to invest 22 more dollars, 20 or 22, and I like to take these, these bets up to the three unit mark, which would be 15 on the five and nine, 18 on the six and eight. So there you have 66, against 65. A dollar loss if the next roll is a 0.7 out to me is no big deal. So the roll comes, it's a 10. Nothing happens, no win, no loses. We now shift that up to the 10. This is where it gets a little complicated because now you're gonna come out with another $15 come bet, but now you're lopsided on the fact of what you have exposed. So the next roll, and you have to take this chance. You're here to gamble, guys. You just can't protect yourself 100% on either way all the time. The four could come next and we would lose $75. But in this example, I'm trying to show you how the hybrid works. So the next roll comes and it hits one of our numbers. Let's say it hits the five. This travels to the five. That will come down and get paid 21, $21. Now, what you just did, because you're gonna take that place bet and you're gonna do your third and final come progression, you don't have to be in the field on the four and the five. Uh, you sort of kind of got to do when you play the six and the eight. I think I explained that earlier. So if you look at this $15 here and you had another $15 exposed, you could really look at the fact that here's your $15 you just exposed on that bet and here's um, $6 left over. Well, if you really think about it, you do have an extra nickel in play. So really, now we have five of the six place boxes at, at uh, in play, and really, we are even when we get to the point of thinking about how this would pay off if the 0.7 out comes. So we had one, two, three, that's our third roll. Next roll comes, hits an eight, moves up to the eight, comes down and gets paid 21, $21. Okay, we're done with our place bets. We are going to rack everything. Now, if you see, you have reduced your exposure a little bit more on whichever side you want to consider it. It's not even, but I like my odds. So that was the fourth roll, okay? Let's say the next roll comes, and I'm gonna keep it on the inside. Let's say that the five gets hit, because I wanna show you how I, re I regress. The five gets hit on the next roll, it's gonna pay even money, which is just $15. It does not pay in 21. It's gonna pay $15. The dealer will push that down. I will throw the dealer, not 15, I will throw the dealer $10 to place my 15. I've now regressed 
uh, my place bet. And as this would continue, I said in the video that on the six roll, the seven would come. As I got closer to above the seven and 10, there's nothing I can do about these two contract bets on the eight and the 10. If they were to hit, I would come down the table minimums. By the time I got to the 10th row, I would have my place bets down the table minimums. In this case, as the example said, it's the six row, the seven comes, okay? So with the seven, we're gonna lose 30, 60, 63. We're gonna lose $73. Watch this, guys. Gonna win 25 there, 25 there. We're taking 23 off the table, which you think is a loss. If you pick your money up and you put everything back in the rack and we bring it over, just in that one example, you can see there's 400, 500, 50, 60, 66 dollars. We won 66 dollars in that example. Now that's the hybrid system at work if it works as planned. We didn't hit a come out seven. We did not hit a come out 11. We did not hit a, a, a low horn or craps number two, three to get paid on. It's just an example and we used it as a six roll 0.7 out. Up to that point, you're going to always come to about this average unless you hit the point. The six and the eight obviously is gonna get hit more than the five and nine on the probability and more than the four and 10, so forth and so on. You understand that, that does happen. So if we had gotten hit, let's say on the six, we would take $25 out of this and you can see that we would be up roughly about that amount of money that there would have been some different changes in there depending on when the point of seven came out. I mean, when the six came and so forth. So let's just hypothetically say we set everything up again and we got hit on the the five. All right, so we had 25 down here. We would lose that plus the $30 in odds. So we'll go ahead and take the 30 out of the odds. Here's 25, there's 30, okay? And now you see that your money management, you're down by $5 and so forth and so on. On the four, if it got hit, you would also be down more because you would have more odds. But I think you understand that by playing the hybrid system, it works that way. And following this video, I will come out with a couple rollouts as an example. If you are seeing this video without a follow-up video or a preceding video, it's because I've decided to post this video on the basic philosophy of the hybrid system at the $25 level, $500 buy-in, and that is how I play the don't. Guys, I hope this makes sense, and we'll see you on the next one. Okay, well, welcome back. That was a pre-recorded video. I am now actually recording live and everything we do from this point forward, we're going to do at least three um, shooters to illustrate the three shooters in that video that is there. I do have $600 on the table instead of 500, but either way you'll see when we get done how much profit or loss that we have. And once again, this was a user, I mean, I'm sorry, a subscriber, request through an email discussion and he was surprised that I showed a video losing. So we're going to see whether I win or lose. This is unedited. So at this point forward, everything is, is, is recorded live, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. I just have to push a couple buttons so we can get our roll tracker engaged. And also you can see my view of where I throw from. If you're looking at my view here, where my hand is, you'll see that I have created a new throwing station and you can see straight through it instead of the uh, way that I used to throw my videos. So this is new in my studio. It's actually the 22 inch throwing station measured high. The top of my table here is 28 inches to the floor and that is 11 and, or 11 and a half inches at chip rack. In any event, let's go ahead and get this thing started. We can talk about how we build a a DIY table the way that we uh, we build it in a later video. Okay, so we're going to be coming out here. We're going to play the same way. No odds on the six and ten. A single odds on the five and nine. Double odds on the four and ten. Did I say six and ten? Six and eight. You know what I mean. I'm actually recording this, guys. I'm not going to go back and edit my my commentary mistakes because trust me, 
I make enough commentary mistakes. People always correct me and they laugh at me. So let's go ahead. We're 25 minutes into this video. I'd like to get these three shooters in pretty fast. They're all going to be random shooters. I'm not going to set the dice on any of them. Although the uh, Roll Tracker KPI probably will say I'm the third shooter. So dice are coming out. Dice are out. And there's aces. Okay. That will work for us because that will pay us 25. Um, so I make sure my KPI was working. So that's, we're 25 ahead and that does happen. Um, but just as soon as it can come, it can go away. All right, dice are out. And just like I said, there's a come out seven. Seems like that always happens. I don't, I, I, it really doesn't matter to me how often I do this. It just seems like that, that really does happen. All right, there's a quarter loss. So remember that this subscriber um, really likes the hybrid system, but didn't understand the potential of the win-loss ratio. And you can't always win. And anybody that says you can is ridiculous because you can't. But you can reduce it's your money management side of you can reduce your exposure of how much you lose during a session, I think, playing the hybrid. It's worked for me. Dice are out. All right, finally we get a point. Finally we get a hard six. So, with the six, you know what we're going to do. If you remember what we, what we just watched, we're at the $10 minimum lay, lay, uh, table. So, we're going to come out here with 22, $15 come. And because it's a six or the eight, we're going to play the field until we establish the nine or we run our three come progressions. Uh, and then we decide if we're going to place the nine or not. All right, so that was a hard six. Dice are out. Uh, there's a hard 10. All right. This 15 will travel to the 10. We'll come out here with another $15 progression, and we will get paid $10 on the 10. Now think about the math there. We do have 15 more exposed. We don't have any more down here, and we did have to come out with five more uh, on the table. So if the 0.7 out comes now, we are not going to be on the plus side. So just keep that in mind as this progresses. If you have a practice table at home or, or a rig or you play on the computer or, or your app on the phone, roll this thing out a couple of times. I mean, you practice before you go into the casino and, and buy in for five or six hundred dollars. Dice are out. There's a three, one, four. Three, one, four. All right, enter the four. And just making sure that I'm right. So the four will travel. That come four will travel up to the four. We are going to get paid ten dollars on the four. Going to throw, take five out of our rack. This is a manual bet. You just put fifteen in the come. And now we are done with whether we establish the nine or not. That'll be our last come progression, regardless of where it goes. All right. Dice are out. And there's a seven. Doesn't matter because we didn't get there. This is typical of what I see uh, that many, that many rolls. So put the seven in. We had a whole roll of six, which is what worked out in our video, which is just about, about average. Um, so let's see what takes place here. So we are going to lose our bets. There's 30, 40, 52, 62, we're going to get paid 15 here and a quarter down there. I'm taking $22 off the table. If we rack all this up, there's 30, 60, going back in. If we take a look, we are down um, 2, 4, 6, 8, we're down $2. Down $2 with a chance to win more than just... Oh, uh, just went into 25. Yes. Had we played the don't only, we'd be $2 ahead. This gives you the ability to play more. All right, so we're coming back out. Quarter on the don't. This is the second, the second shooter. Dice are out. And there's a 639. Now, this really does help us because it, it, it permits us to have, have already established the nine which is covered in the field, but on the five and the nine, I typically don't play the field because as you saw in the video, you can always rewind it, watch it, you see what, what I'm going to do here. Single odds, $30 down here, 30 to win 20, with 25 is 45. 
I come up with the minimum, 44 inside. Remember what I said, 44 inside. All right, 44 against 45, it's even. You could play it this way. You don't have to run a come progression, you could. I like the come progression, 15 on the come, which means that I can put more money out here to win. So I'm gonna add 21, uh, 22 more dollars in play, and hopefully we'll get to the point where you'll see me regress, where in the example video, in, embedded in this uh, video, you didn't get to see that. So we have 15 on the five and the nine, 18, on the six and the eight, or otherwise three units each. The nine is the point. All right, dice are out. And there's a six, four, two. Remember, I'm throwing all these random, six, four, two. So in the video, I kind of said the place bet comes down. It doesn't come down until you tell the dealer. They just assume that you're gonna take it down. That six come is gonna travel. You're gonna get paid $21, and you're gonna tell the dealer, take my six place down. So there's the 21 for the six. There's the, the 18 that was up there. We're gonna rack all of this. Chip off on the run there. And this will become our second combat for the shooter. All right, six, is the, uh, six is, was the last roll. Dice are out. And there's AC Ducey. Now this is part of what I talked about in the video. We're actually gonna lose that come progression, but it's still our third come progression. So that 15 will come off the table. We'll come back out for what will be our last come progression. Cause this always doesn't work out. You can always hit the numbers that you don't have placed. You know, right now our winners are five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, we, we don't, oops. Guys, I know what I did here. This is live. That is supposed to be the point. I therefore would not have that 15 on the nine. Before you comment, I corrected it. Sorry guys. And that was an AC Ducey. So back to my point I was trying to make. Remember, I'm doing this, recording this live as I go along. It is a mistake that I realize I made. But the illustration shows you the 44 against the numbers that are there. You can still see that all the math still works the same. So we're on to the next roll. This will be roll number three and our last come progression. Remember, we lost on that one with the ace deuce. Dice are out. And there's an 11. Well, that's nice because we are going to get paid the $15 on the come. And this gives you one of your options that you can do. You can keep that come progression out there or rack the money. In this example, because once I get to 10, I'm gonna turn things off, I'm gonna play on the conservative side and I'm gonna rack that. So that makes us um, our one come progression. The second one we got hit on the three. The third one we won on the 11. We're done. And this basically will play out for a few more rolls until you see, hopefully you can see what I'm going to do on the regression standpoint, unless we hit the seven or the nine. Dice are out. And there's a three. And this is the reason why I say I keep track of how many rolls go on before I do one thing or the other. So this shooter is on coming up on his sixth shot. We didn't get paid on the three. His sixth shot, dice are out. And there's a six, four, 10. Once again, we didn't get paid and this can happen, but you're also not losing at the moment. Seems to me I may not have put a number in, but I don't think it really matters at this point. 10, dice are out. Uh, there's a six, okay. Now on the six, we have a come bet. We're not gonna win $21, it's a contract come. This is the part that I'm gonna show you. We are gonna get paid 15, all right? That'll come down, the dealer will push this. We will throw out three more dollars, or two more dollars, I'm sorry. We're gonna throw out two dollars to the dealer and tell them to put us up. This will be table minimum. So at this moment, right now, on table minimum, this is minimum. In the next roll or two, regardless of whether we hit, if we hit the nine or the seven, this hand will be over with. If we make it to, uh, let's take a look here at the roll tracker. That was uh, roll number seven. So if we make it two more rolls or three more rolls, we will regress the table minimums or turn them off until it rolls out. And if I turn them off, I'm probably gonna take my odds down as well. And then I only have $25 at risk. It'll make sense when you see it. And this is how I learned to play. And for the most part, on a larger scale, this is how I play. Dice are out for the most part. 
And there's the 7 out. Well, we're not going to get to that 10th roll. So we only have one more shooter in this video in order to make it. So, in this case, we are going to lose 40, 46 dollars. Okay, over here, one, two, three, four, five. Now let me play it this way. I'll pay the odds. I'll grab a green from the bank and pay the odds down that, they pay it like that. All right, so that'll complete roll number two, and I'm only gonna do one more for this video, but let's go ahead and rack everything up. We now have more than 100 reds. We now have more greens. Now we're up to 500 in greens. There's 600, so we are um, $34 ahead on the two shooters. Now you might say $34 isn't a lot of money. That's true. This is the basis of the system. I would have done a little bit of different roles and manipulation of my bets and so forth to make a little bit more because the come out sevens, I mean the come out sevens, the point seven outs, if you take a look, you know, we had one come out at six and we had a PSO at the roll of eight. That's about average. Uh, that's about average. Looking at the roll tracker KPI with a seven roll ratio of 4.7, we should be on the winning side with the seven roll ratio at seven, that doesn't really count at this particular moment in our, in our uh, way we're playing now, but it is a number that you should always understand the importance of that number. Okay, so we're coming out on the third and final shooter. We're okay on the time. Dice are out, unless this turns into a long roll. Uh, oh, there's an AC Ducey. Okay, that's going to be a quarter winner down there. That doesn't always happen, guys. It can come right back and be 11. Remember when I said that last time, we came right back with a come out seven. So, dice are out. And there's a six. Okay, so our final point will be a six. We never did, uh, in this example of rolling live, we never were able to establish a four or 10. Uh, it's gonna be a six. There'll be no odds. That'll be 22. So the profitability on this on this three shooters is going to be very low, um, but, um, and we could actually go backwards because if the six comes right back to back before we establish anything, uh, we, would, we would go backwards. But you'll see that we didn't plan on the light side, we would have lost on those short rolls. We do 15 in the come, we set the 10 in the field until we establish the nine, then we stop the field or three come progressions. So the point's going to be six again. And the dice are out. Oh, there's Ace Deuce. That's not a good one for us. That's like losing that uh, 25 we made there. Took half of that profit away. So Ace Deuce is going to pay double. You say, wait a minute, Jeff. You just said it takes half of the profit away. Um, okay, maybe not half. Maybe five bucks. Okay, you get the idea. So. That was our first come progression. I'm gonna rack that. This is gonna be our second come progression. This is where playing that field actually does work, but I do agree with a lot of my fellow YouTubers, especially on the dark side, that think the field bet is a wrong bet to be playing on this strategy. I don't do it all the time, guys. Dice are out. And there's a four. Okay. That'll be our first come progression. Uh, I mean, our, our travel to the four first come that got established. It's really our second uh, come because we got uh, we lost on the deuce. The four is also going to pay us ten dollars. We're going to go to our third and final our third and final come progression. This should be coming up on the fifth shooter. It is. Okay. So with this ten dollars here, we still don't have the nine established. I probably would do that, but because I talked about the way the video is going, I am going to do one more time in the field, and that'll be the last time, regardless of what happens from this point forward. Because as soon as this, as soon as the point is hit or the PSO is hit, this video is going to be over with. I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to say I'm not going to roll the next one because I may, but if we hit the point, dice are out, and there's a four. That works out good for us. Okay, it's a hard four at that. So. This would travel to the four. That would be known what's called an off and on. So if I traveled it around and I got paid four on the four, I'm going to get $15. I'm going to get 
for the four in the field. I'm now going to place the nine. I'm going to pull my come progression down and I'm going to rack all this up. Guys, right now we cannot be a loser. We have $627 in our rack. Regardless, if we, if we hit the six, we pull the quarter off. We've got 10, 20, 30, 45, $47 out there that's going to go in that rack. If we hit the PSO next, we are going to lose 47, win 25. You can see that we're ahead on the three shooters. You can't go wrong at this particular moment with this play, the way that this has rolled out. And this is about average, especially for um, the being hit with the horn numbers, the low craps numbers on the come out rolls and the don't pass and on the come bets that we had where we lost and won some. That's about average. The only thing we didn't experience was a come out seven. And yes, they are aggravating. Dice are out. All right, there's a 12. Doesn't hurt us, doesn't help us. That's a 12. That is roll number six. So this is gonna be roll number seven. Dice are out. Remember, I am trying to get to 10 rolls before I decide what I'm doing up here. All right, that's a 325. 325 is going to pay us $21. I'm sorry, it's gonna pay us uh, 15. Uh, uh, it's gonna pay us 14. I'm gonna throw 15. We're gonna throw the dealer a dollar. That'll come over here to our rack. We'll rack that, sorry about that. Um, all right, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be roll number eight for this shooter. Dice are out. And there's the seven. We don't get to 10. We don't get to the number of 10, but I think this will illustrate the fact that this is about average for what takes place. Real quick, before I cash up, 22 rolls, three shooters. We had a seven roll ratio of 5.7. We should be winning uh, a seven out ratio of 7.3. We should be winning because if that goes up to 10 or 15, we will be losing. 22 rolls, let's see what, how much we really did win. Let's go ahead. So we're gonna take this money down. You can see that's coming off the table and we're gonna get paid 25 on the don't, pay the don'ts, and let's take a look at what happened here. All right, so, all right, 100, that is 500, 500, 75, 90. there's 90, $91, three shooters, 22 rolls, hybrid system. If we went back and really thought, and I probably should have played both comparisons at the same time, both of the players, the flat don't versus the uh, hybrid player, both of these players would be up, $91. Guys, I hope you understand this video. If you could, if you liked it, please click the uh, like and subscribe. I would greatly, uh, not like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. If you could click the like button, I would appreciate that as well. Till next time, guys, this is Jeff from Mid-Atlantic Craps. Be safe and play smart.